Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Hey. Oh, it is Dr. Drew. Here we are. Dr. Drew is over there. He's uh, back. <laughs> we didn't know where he was last night, but that's all right. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Jay McGraw is our guest tonight. Jay is the author of uh, Closing the Gap. It's a uh, book about virginity. Right, that's no. exactly right. It's a uh, strategy for bringing parents and his, teens together. That was his previous book, Filling the Gap. Right. Filling the Gap. Yeah. Um, let, I was just uh, talking about a friend of mine. Actually, lots of friends of mine. Here, here's what I want to say. Jay, you're, you're a young man. Let me hear it. How old are you, 22, 23? 22. 22 years old. Phil McGraw, the uh, Oprah Phil, is uh, Jay's father, by the way. And I think he came out here last time Jay came out here. But here's what our, our listeners should understand. And, Drew, wouldn't you say this is sort of the overall, if there's any message we could try to get across in the show, it is this. There's a period in your life that has to do with your friends and your family and mostly your family and your upbringing and everything. And it's a very short, relatively small period. It feels big when you're in it. That's yeah. sort of age from about three or four to about 13 or 14. Feels like a forever. But when you stand back and look at an 85-year life, it's just a small right. small part just of it. Just a little percentage of it. Yeah. Small percentage. And depending on how that goes is depending how... The rest depends of on the next 70 years of your life That's goes. Right. And there's a, there's a small group of people who understand that. Right. And even if it got effed up, they go back and correct it. Even then, they walk with a limp. Sure. But they go about their life. Yeah. And then there's everyone else. Which and those people are a product of that, and that is the rest of their life. That would be 99.9999% of this country. Wait, did you say six nines or yeah. seven nines? <laughs> Somewhere between. Well, six now that closing the gap out, it's, it's back to six nines. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, right. It's Jay, Jay yeah, is, that was his point. Right. J Jay's plan for this book was to get it down to 99.9999. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> and people don't understand that. And if any of you, you don't understand it either, a lot of people that, that are listening, but wait till you get to be our age. You get a little bit older, and you see the same friends doing the same things and blaming the same people right. over and over and over. And you don't go to school with them every day. You you talk to them twice a year around the holidays or just to catch once up, in a make while. sure everything is still screwed up. And like you it was. hear the same screwed right. up stories over and over oh, again. You're still smoking pot. Okay, good deal. Yeah. Oh, you wish they would start smoking right. pot to be a step up. Yeah. At least hey, they'd have an excuse. I do have That's some right. good news though. I, California has joined the civilization. <laughs> Uh, women in California are now able to access emergency contraception without a prescription. Yay. As of January 1. And listen to what the release says. I, I, want, I just want to do a handspring when I hear this. <laughs> this contraceptive works by delaying ovulation and preventing fertilization, not by ending pregnancies. Okay. How many years have I been saying that? It's like Dr. Drew's dream day. This right. is. Right. Do you, do you think that message will be now abundantly clear to all the people that were against it? Well, all the pro-life whack jobs? <laughs> all right, but first of all... Do you think they're going to embrace yeah. this science I don't, but now? but at least we're here. We have okay. the law on our side. Right. And I would like to offer myself up for anyone who would like EC. Uh, they can use me as the physician, referring physician. <laughs> I would like to be nationwide Good. the EC doctor. Right. Nationwide I'm referring I, physician. You know what? I really, seriously, would like to set something like that up. Oh, you know go I mean? ahead. Go Just ahead. Call my office. I'll there you approve go. EC. I don't care where you are. What's EC? Oh, emergency con Okay. Just want to straighten that out. Hire an operator to deal with it. <laughs> all right there, uh, Drew. Good. And I'm, like I said, I'm sure all the folks have done a 180 Yeah, but this, this could now. be it. This could be, yeah. you know what I mean? A few other, I don't know what other states went down with this. This is the California Medical Association. Uh, all right. I think a lot will know about it, too. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of people will know that that's the case. Well, now they will. <laughs> well, let's talk... Uh, just a little bit uh, to Jay now. So uh, anyway, we can uh, we're going off on tangents uh, here, but this book basically covers what it basically covers what you were talking about. I mean, we do have you know fifteen, eighteen years, whatever of preparation to go out in the rest of our lives, and we're screwing it up. And parents are parents are complaining, teenagers are complaining, and saying, you know, what's the problem? I mean, if you think about it, when our parents were our age, like the the racy songs where the Beatles. Can I hold your hand or I want to hold your hand or whatever? Right. And now now we've got media saying, 
you know, banging on the bathroom floor and what it feels like for a girl. There's a totally different world that we as young people are living in than did our parents. And we're wondering why we're, there's a disconnect. We're wondering why we have nothing in common with our parents. And closing the gap is saying, okay, teenagers, here's how you can go and talk to your parents in a way that they don't look down on you. They don't always say no. And you have a relationship where you get the things that you need uh, to mature and you get to do the things that you want to along the way. And parents, it's the same thing. Here's how you can set up a relationship that's beneficial for both of you in the short term as well as the long run. So this is for teens and parents. Yeah, that's that's right. All right. I'm amazed, uh, by the way, at the amount of parents that are sort of okay with their kids hating their guts. Right. I would find that profoundly disturbing as a parent. I mean, I know these are a lot of these are disturbed people, but... We talk to so many people who, you know, some 17-year-old, 18-year-old chick, and you say, what about your dad? And they say, he's an asshole. Right. And we say, when's the last time you talked to him? And they say, it's been four years. Yeah, can't remember. And he say, where does he live? And they say, I don't know. And I think to myself, geez, you got a kid out there who is is not only, your kid's not only just sort of Luke on you, your kid hates you. (laughs) Doesn't that? That doesn't bother you at all? You know, something that I found with a lot of teenagers in, in, in talking to them in preparation for closing the gap, and in, in, in response, one of the myths that I talk about in the book is, as a parent, you can't be your teenager's friend. Uh, so many parents think, I've got to be just, oh yeah, they think, i, I got to be boot camp here or else I'm going to lose them. I'm going to have no respect. And so they do one of two things. They either exercise no authority and they just go you know, drinking with them. Or they're so strict that their teenagers absolutely hate them. And you don't have to go to one of those extremes. You can be their friend when things are going well, but be their parent when it's not. I mean, we only got two parents in this world, if we're lucky. And we got a bunch of friends at school, so don't ever think as a parent that you can't be our friend. Or that you need more friends. Yeah, that we need more friends. I mean, that you can't be our parent. We're not going to run right. off. So speaking of hating parents, there's a call along those lines. All right. Steve. Steve. 16. Steve. Yeah. What's up? Um, nothing much. Just my dad being kind of an asshole. There we go. See, yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. That, those are for you. <laughs> These are for you. No, that book sounds pretty good. True. It, it is real good. Man. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I touched something on the console and Drew spoke about it in the microphone. Yeah, they're so having their own little deal over there. That was my fault. Right. I, should, I distracted Drew. I shouldn't have made that move. It's like when an ant, when a trainer goes into a cage. He has to be careful <laughs> to walk slowly. Well, you are, Sorry. in fact, an animal, Adam. Drew, were you really going to leave it at just those are for you? No, I was going to get into it if you were going to let me. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. These I, are for I, you. These, I, these are cigars <laughs> from Cuba. They are for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have okay. other things for you, too. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Steve. I'm sorry. No, um, my all right. Like, my dad will threaten to hit me, and, like, sometimes he does. He'll sock me in the chest or grab me and throw me down. Have you ever reported that? Have I what? Ever reported that? No. You ever thought about it? Yeah, if that's one of the reasons like, I'm calling, because, like, I mean, I'll admit I am kind of spoiled. What do you do? What do you do to make him hit you in the... Like, sometimes we'll get in arguments over, like, stupid stuff, like, just something little will blow up, and he'll blow it up into really something big. I mean, he'll go loose off of a broken channel changer and blame it on me. Well, what, what do you mean you're spoiled when the guy's punching you? No, no, like, I am kind of spoiled, and I mean, they give me motorcycle bikes to race and stuff. Mm. Mm. Listen, That's I'd let good. my dad suck, sock me once in a while <laughs> if he got me a goddamn motorcycle. Is he, is he drinking <laughs> when he does this? Uh, he drinks 24-7 anyways. Yeah, but so I, this could be more about alcoholism than anything it, else. And by the way, there, there's, there's there's nothing... You, I mean, he's, there's really never much in him when he does that. I mean, it, it can oh, be... Oh, there's, be there's always... Or he can be completely drunk. Well, what's he do for a living? He's a farmer. <laughs> Well, all right. Well, uh, I can't blame him for drinking. Then. How about him sobering up? I mean, that that seems like the angle. Yeah, we've tried that. It doesn't work. No, I mean, no matter what. Who's we? Working, he's got a beer in his hand. Who's we? Like we've my mom, me and my mom have tried. Yeah. Well, what is? The, wait, wait, wait a minute. The, 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 him stopping using alcohol has nothing to do with him. Very little to do with him being sober. If you if you try to get him to stop drinking, but he not engage in some form of treatment, what you're going to have is a pissed off, irritable depressed guy yeah true. So, and what you need to do is get him treated so he learns other ways to manage those feelings other than the alcohol yeah just stopping drinking will not make him a lot better hey steve yeah 
don't you think you could kick his ass? I mean, when he's you know drunk. Well, no. I mean, like sometimes he'll be drunk and sometimes he's sober. I mean, it, and he still acts the same well, way. Well, pick one of the times where he's drunk and you <laughs> kick his ass. <laughs> Are you bigger than he is? No, not even close. Oh, yeah, really? That's he's, nah. he's probably, I'm probably 120. He's 190. Oh. Uh, that sucks. Well, you're at least a smart guy for not trying to kick his ass. All right, yeah. Steve, here's the deal. Talk. No, no, like, okay. I want to know whether I should report or not. Cause I'm Absolutely. Yes. 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 I my, now I pay for my own bikes and everything. Look, hang up and call right now. Don't Dude. not report him because he's buying you a motorcycle. No, 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 don't no, protect no. her from the consequences of his disorder. Here, here's here's like, a. I pay for all my own stuff now. They don't pay for anything. I know. So you don't you won't lose no, anything by reporting. They'll away from me if I do anything. Or they'll put me in a foster home or something. I'd hang up no. right now and call. No. Just call adult uh, Child Protective Services. Social Services, Depart Department of Social Services locally where you are. Just discuss it with them and make a report. And, and Drew, what's the, what happens? I mean, he's got two parents. If he reports one... They're not going to... They're not likely to take him out of the home for right. a, a single episode. Unless it was something you know horrible going on. Oh, right? plus he's 16. He should want to get the hell out of there. He's got a <laughs> drunken farmer dad who's socking him in the chest. And that means it's just time to leave. Yeah. He's 16, though. Yeah, he's, he's, right, he's on the cusp. Yeah. But what I'm saying is... is he's Preparing. Not, begin preparing. You're not going to put him with another family for the last 18 months and then that, you know, and also, go though, off somewhere. And also, you know, as you mentioned by, at the opening of the show, the impact of having a drunken, physically abusive dad. That, that yeah. Screws, yeah, it's lifelong screws, repercussions. It screws with your head. Oh. Yeah. oh, yeah, I don't. I wish my dad drank. I, re I really do. I get, thank God I could kick my dad's pussy ass by the age of 11. <laughs> <laughs> I read that. Have you ever seen my dad? Uh, yeah, but he had his way he, with you. He just sat there and did nothing. He did nothing. <laughs> he, he stalled me out, but he is such a pussy, my dad. Oh, I could man. kick his ass. Let me, let me, uh, Stephen Hawking could kick my dad's <laughs> ass. Could beat his ass. I think when my dad's 80 and walking on a cane, he can still kick my ass. Hey, your dad is a big guy. Yeah, he's a giant. What is he, 6'4? He's like 6'4, 250. Yeah, yeah, he's got that mustache. He's got that ass-kicking yeah. mustache. And that bald head. That yeah, just like, he could butt you with it. Jack with me, bucko. He could charge yeah. you with it. That's There's right. nothing to grab onto if you get him in a no, headlock. No, no, I've tried. Slide off. He's really the ultimate yeah. warrior, that uh, film. When he gets real mad, he rubs Vaseline on the top so he can slide, you know. <laughs> it's like the old football trick. We're going to get a little ass on Phil here tonight. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, that's a whole that's a whole weird thing because I, as I've, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but my dad is such a colossal pussy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tough, you funny, you've never mentioned. I think that. he did no, mention. No, that. no, no. Never, no? Never. Oh, I was shocked. He is okay. such a puss that really? I would. I had zero fear of him from age, <laughs> you know, six and a half, seven on. <laughs> from about the time I developed the emotion of fear, <laughs> I didn't have it for my dad. Right. <laughs> I mean, I could have kicked his ass when I had jammies with the feet in them. <laughs> could have stuffed one of my jammy feet well, up his minute. ass. Be fair. <laughs> that was a couple weeks ago. That's right. Yeah, I, really. I, do, I do walk around in those. The point is, is it would be weird having a big drunken dad floating around the house yeah. wondering if he was going to come in and beat your ass or not. That has got to freak you out. I think weird out. would work for that, yeah. Yeah, weird, bad. Speaking, and, of, speaking yeah. of weird, I don't know if you guys saw on, uh, I guess it was MTV the other night, these uh, this deal called furries. These people. I don't heard it? about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is some weird stuff, right there. Yeah, What's a furry? Sexually aroused with these like cartoon animals. Yeah, they basically. get dressed up like mascots. And yeah. Oh no, that's, that's some yeah. weird stuff. Well, we, we heard about keep moving. We, yeah, we yeah. gotta get something else going. Moving but, right along. But we uh, we had someone describe how they work in a place where these guys come and pay to dress up like ponies. Mm -hmm. And pull, pull like little Cinderella carts. Cinderella carts oh them man, them. there's some weird cats out there. Hey, I've said it before. I'll say it again. It takes all kinds. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I here's what I'd like to bring back into the lexicon of uh, American conversation. It takes all kinds. Okay. And to the tune of. To the tune of. <laughs> Those are the two things <laughs> you're I'm working, working on, on. To the tune of, huh? right? Aaron. Yeah. You're 22. Yeah. Hi. Hi. What's up? Not a much. I'm sitting in my bed knitting. You've you've been on hold to the tune of 33 minutes. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Nice job, Adam. Thanks. Well, I was listening to the show because I'm in Manhattan. So. So what's up? Uh, um, I just had a question. I've been meaning to call like for a long time because I just um, I don't know. I I was just home for the holidays and um, and my cousins now live next door to me and when they were growing up they didn't they just moved in about three years ago but they're 
um, there's three of them. Two of them are twins, and they're 14. And then their older sister's 16. And um, when I was younger, like, they, their father was just always the weird uncle and, you know, the whole... Um, be more, be more. Tommy, the Uncle Ernie. His name's... But, but anyway... What did he do? He, was, he's, he wasn't really sexually abusive to my sister and my other girl. Cousins what did he do? We heard, I mean, we heard about three and a half minutes on his name. Right. Okay. Just tell us what he actually did. Um, well, he was always kind of, you know, saying things to my sister and I about, you know, I don't know, he took a picture of himself naked once, and I've just heard weird Beautiful. stories. Beautiful. And what did he do with that picture? He showed it to my sister and was like, here, get rid of this. Don't and how, wh- how old were you at the time? Um, or was she? Oh, she was probably about maybe 14 or... All right, so that's but, way out of bounds, right? Yeah, right. and right. for me, like, I mean, it happened when... I mean, for me, it was just little things like, you know, rub my belly or do this when I was about... Or do what? Or so. Yeah, what's the or this? I yeah, you're going to have to be more specific. Come on. This. Well, I don't even really remember. That's the thing. Well, give us, like, a, give us... What's the worst thing? Come about? on. The worst thing for me personally? Yes, you personally. Sad of me. Um, I think it was just when he would say, like... Incest? Rub it. No, I mean, I don't even know if that's... This, my biggest fear right now is that I, I don't think it happened to me or my sister, but I'm worried if it happened to my cousin. How are they doing? Are they um, having problems? No, but they're a little bit... I mean, when no. I look at them now and when I was their age, I was more emotionally mature than they are now. Well, what makes you think that... <sighs> what makes on. you think no. something's happening? And be fair, this is her, their father. We're talking about here. Right. You know, even if he's not overtly abusive, he's still a, a, a jerk. You know? yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, he's. But the thing is, is, is now that I've noticed it, is I was home for the holidays, and he. Um, now that the girls are older, I don't think anything really happens now. But um, we have two young girls that just moved in across the street, and I see the way he like they'll come in that. You know, the family will come in the house, and he'll grab one of the little girls and take them in the basement. Uh, oh, of, whoa. Yeah. Adam, what do you want to ask? And, well, well, the thing uh, is, is if I address, I've addressed it to my mom and dad, and they're like, no, you know, don't, it's no reason to say anything, and you know if you would to say right. anything hey, to the Aaron, neighbors. shut up. All right, what? now stay shut up for a second, please. Okay. How old are your cousins? 14, did you say? And 14 and 16. 14 and 16. And and this is who's... What relation to your parents is this guy? Is this someone's brother? My mother's sister's husband. It's my mother's so brother-in-law. By marriage. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. And are your parents relatively sane? Oh, they're to- yeah, they're totally sane. Were your mother's parents sane? Yes. And how about the father particularly? Grandpa. My, my mother's father? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was... Great. I mean, uh, oh, okay. Is, your, is this guy still married to your mom's sister? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. And they're totally. I mean, it's an unhealthy relationship. They never talk about whole thing. Okay. You know? do, you, do you think you can try? Forget about your dad because this is your mother's sister, right? right? Try sitting down with your mom and having a serious conversation without accusations. Just have a conversation with your mom about this guy and tell her some of the things he did to you and your sister. Well, that's the thing. I have. I mean, I've sat down with her before and said, and I'm, you know. And she blow. And what well, does she say? You know. Uh, well, you know what that would mean for the family they live Ooh. right next door to each other. Oh boy! Other. So that's not, that's not a good response. Their relationship. So she believes you. You told her everything that happened, and she believed it. Oh, and her other sister knows it. They all know it. Oh, nice. So the only one that's in denial. Hold on a second. <laughs> no, it. What's it? That he's weird. Is, yeah, I, I, I know, but they're, they're, they're worried about him. But they, there's something wacky, something inappropriate about him. But I'm not quite sure whether the mom knows or thinks he's doing some molesting and wants to kind of gloss over it, or just thinks that Aaron's just sort of running off at the mouth and she should calm down. And I don't get the idea that Aaron gets good reads off of people. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She kind of sugarcoats a few things as well. She, she glosses. Yeah. Well, she's 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 moving so fast. I'm not sure if anything sticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me try one more time. Aaron. Yeah. Um. So, is your mom a sane person? Yeah. And I mean, do you really? Is she really? Is she a smart person? Yes, yeah, she's very smart. And but why, if she really believed there was something going on, would she want to sort of sweep this under the carpet? Is it that she doesn't really believe something's happening? No, I. 
I mean, I've tried to explain it to her. No, no, no. Up, 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 up. Shut up and answer the question. Does she really perhaps not believe that there's anything to your allegations? Perhaps. Okay. There and that's go. why she doesn't want to... And does, she doesn't want to... She doesn't want to bring this all out in the face of it being probably, in her point of view, not something of consequence. Did you, I mean, did you tell her specifically what was going on, or did you say, I think, you know, Unk is a little weird over there? Well, I mentioned, you know, we talked about it when we were younger, and even now, about how, you know, in the past, what things had happened, little things. and Like what? That, you told, you told, hold on, you told him about the nude picture? Yeah. And did just, you, no, did you tell your mom about the picture? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She knows all about that. And what, did you, what was her reaction? She thinks it's awful and gross, and everyone in her whole family knows it. Her, you know, and, and this is the thing, as I've been talking to her brother, who completely agrees with me, that, that it's, you know... I, I find I, it hard to believe that an entire family of people agree with you that uncle is molesting kids, and nobody will do anything well, about it. And, and if your brother, or your uncle, the true uncle, really believes there's something going on, team up with the family members that are yeah. of like mind, and let's go ahead and do something here. Okay. Whatever that is, you, you make do up your something, mind. Yeah. Do something here. It's time. I get the feeling when uh, Stacy cranks it up, everyone sort of closes up shop. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, if, if your ears <laughs> were like a storefront... Or like a shark's eye, eyelids. <laughs> no, I, I picture... It's like the metal grades that I, go down I at the I picture mall, the yeah. person's head being like a store... In Mexico, around <laughs> siesta time, big metal. I picture rolling down, rolling right. down the security bars over the ears, flipping the sign, <laughs> "Do not disturb." And the TV <laughs> gets a little louder. TV gets a little louder. The people sink back a yeah, little deeper like, into their oh, seats. Oh, and it's another story time. There's that. There's that deep exhale. Well, it's kind of <sighs> like when Adam talks. Strangely enough, isn't that weird? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is the alternative. Could be hearing this when she talks. <laughs> All right. Jay McGraw is our guest. He's uh, written a book called uh, Closing the Gap. It's a strategy for uh, bringing parents and teens uh, together. <clears throat> and we will uh, talk more about that to him and you and us and all that after this. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. System of a Down will be in here on Thursday night. Jay McGraw is in here tonight. Jay has uh, written a book called uh, Closing the Gap. It's a strategy for bringing parents and teens together. You may uh, know his dad, Phil, Dr. Phil, from uh, the uh, Oprah show. How's Dr. Phil's show doing? Starts in September, so... Oh, jeez, I thought it was on. No. It's not on? No. Um, I don't know. I don't watch it's gonna be better. It's going to be better than that. <laughs> better than Oprah? Or better, than, <laughs> better than people not knowing when it's on. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, it Come seems on. like this Dr. Phil show... I, it, just didn't this just show it's been that talked about for a long time? It's been around for a while. It just right. I would have assumed that it was it was out already. No, it's going to be September 9th. September 9th. Jesus, what month? Wait a minute. So September 9th. A few months away. Yeah, after summer. It, a few it months comes away. It's a year away, Brian. Right I mean, after August. Nine months. So nine months. Yeah. Right after August. <laughs> Is he saying it's after August? Okay. Hey, here's a I, I just mean it's been, a, it's been, it seems like it's been some time. That's all right. What's the show? What's he going to do? Talk to people? Um, <laughs> probably. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think so. What time is it on? Uh, where? It's going to be on at either 3 or 4 o'clock. If Oprah's on uh, Oprah, at 4, Oprah's it's going to oh, be on I at see. 3. If Oprah's on at 3, it's going to be on at it's 4. It's going to like piggyback. It's going to be on at 4 in Los Angeles, 3 in New York. Right. 3 in Dallas. All right. Is there pressure for you uh, having a successful dad who's bigger than you are? It's <laughs> bigger than I am. <laughs> um, no, not particularly. No? It's, no, I mean, he, he it doesn't... works pretty good for me. Does he put pressure on you? No, no, he's good about it. Would he Would he mind if you were, uh, you know, you just want to work at a bike shop or something? Um, probably, yeah. He would? Yeah. All right. If I, like, wanted to sell Nikes or something. What if you went gay? Or, um, <laughs> no, what if you want K? You wouldn't go for that either. I don't know. I have, have no intention of finding out. You want to try? Oh, okay. Yeah. I just for a joke. Adam's inviting you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, saying we got, we Adam, could, I we, don't know what you're into over there. but We, we could have a pretty good life together. <laughs> <laughs> you write your books and me hanging out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you want another cup of coffee, honey? <laughs> All right. I'm going to be down at the model toys. Oh, I'm going to be down messing with the uh, model, model, model airplanes. I'm going to go play with some toys. Keep riding, baby. <laughs>
<laughs> Want a little Hummer while you're at the computer? I've noticed Adam is really good at just hanging out. Oh. That's the kind of job I'm looking for, somewhere I get paid real well to just kind of hang out. I would be the world's greatest wife. <laughs> I would be so good. I'd take care of that house. Right, right. Make my man nice breakfast every morning. <laughs> you eat breakfast around noon, right? <laughs> That's when I get up. <laughs> oh, yeah, you said morning. Yep. Drew uh, bought me a nice gift. He brought me some uh, Cuban cigars he stole from uh, Fidel Castro when he was... Uh, no, I his, actually his I had a license to bring him in. <laughs> oh, you did? There's such a thing. I didn't, never knew about Cigar it. Cigar license? Yeah. Wow. And he got me some uh, beautiful shave cream. <laughs> See if you like to use it. I will use it. Thank you. Try it. Right now? No, no. Right now. Oh, okay. I, really, I really want you to try that. Okay. Thank you. Let's uh, go back to the phones and uh, speak to uh, Stacy, who's 19. Stacy? Hi. Hey. Um, are you all ready for the question? <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> okay. Um, well, when I'm having sex with my boyfriend, um, my vagina becomes sort of irritated. Classic love line. Mm-hmm. And, um, How long into the whole interaction does that take? Uh, it does take a little uh, a while. How long before it starts getting irritated? Probably about five, ten minutes. That, that's not... Ten is minutes that, is not uncommon for somebody not, to start to get okay. irritation. Is he using a condom? Yes. But, yeah, especially with a condom. Okay, but is it ten minutes? Or ten, five minutes. Ten minutes? Um, you know, I don't, I'm not sitting there with a stopwatch. I really don't know. It just seems like ten minutes. Is it ten minutes yeah, according to you or according to him? Right. I mean, um, would it be three songs on the radio? <laughs> is what I'm saying. I'm sorry. I, I'm not... I would say more ten minutes. Come on, get your facts straight. All right, but 10 minutes. It's, it can be anywhere in between that. Is know? that too long for you, you think? I mean, do you um, need it to be that long? Well, it's. I'm still enjoying it, I guess. I'm still continuing at that time. So it's not necessarily a bad thing until it starts to become a little irritated. I'm not sure if there's something that I can do or use to make that irritation go away. Are you lubricating normally? Um, are we lubricating? Are you lubricating normally? Yes. Do you think what I'm thinking, Adam? Yeah. I, I get what I want to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there was that, thinking, let's that go occurred to me. Let's go. Let's go to Cuba. <laughs> Take over. <laughs> hey, Start a coup. Cuba. Hey, Stacy. We, we, what Drew's saying is not: Are you using lubrication? But are, are you are you moist down there? Yes, I, I got what he's saying. You're doing that. That's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. How about using? How about supplementing? God's juices with uh, uh, some, some of some man-made oh. stuff. <laughs> I haven't tried that before, but... I'm, it's probably a good happen. idea. That would be a good place to start. Seems like, seem like the, the, condom. the condom, yeah. yeah. Why don't you start there? Okay. Start with uh, start with a little lubrication and, um, you know, a little KY or Astro or whatever. Make sure whatever. it's, you know, you, you don't, can't use the petroleum-based stuff that dissolves the condom. Oh, it does. Okay, <laughs> thanks. And um, my friend has a question here. Um, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> What's her question? Am I able to talk now? Yeah. All right. Um, when I have sex with my boyfriend after a while, actually, well, like the first, you know, couple thrusts or whatever, it feels like I'm almost having an episiotomy. <laughs> like the bottom is ripped, it feels, each time. Does, do you actually bleed or anything happen to you? I don't believe I've bled. Is there irritation? <laughs> how do you How do you not know that? <laughs> God. Let me think. I didn't lose I, I didn't need a transfusion <laughs> or anything. Yeah, I have this heavy flowing now. It's, <laughs> I mean, Stacey, did you, oh, do you feel irritated man. after the fact? It's, yeah, after a while it's, it's just, I had to stop eventually because it gets sore. I'm like, you know, is it <laughs> Well, you girls are just a house full big. of fun over there. <laughs> Why don't you two go lesbian? <laughs> yeah. Here, here's your cure. They weren't, um, they weren't made for me. I, I maybe go with the uh, lube. Why don't you borrow some of Stacey's lube? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's, except, though, she's having pain at the beginning. And people with vaginismus and, you know, muscular spasms that sometimes feel a tearing sensation, even though it's not. Right. I think doctors make up words sometimes, like vaginismus. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's just to make it seem highly dramatic. Right. It's very yeah. technical. I like uh, mol molluscum contagiosis. Isn't that nice? Al? Yes. Al? Yes, sir. You're 35. What's up there, buddy? Is this Adam? That's right. <laughs> oh, guys, I'm honored to be talking to you guys. Thank oh, you. Oh, man. I Anybody that calls Adam, sir, I'm a little worried about. <laughs> <laughs> See, Jay's only been yeah, a show honestly, twice. I can relate to Adam uh, in a lot of ways. I'm 35, and I've been through a lot of things like Adam with his parents. I, I, anyways, my question is about my penis when I ejaculate. Right. Okay. Well, um, according to my wife and and everything, I, 
I was like a regular Peter Norris, like a jack weight, large quantity, like mm-hmm. the jack weight over my head. The, the fumes could be <laughs> would be propelled out. <laughs> Oh, over your head while you were uh, laying down? Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So now... Don't stand behind me. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, uh, this happened a year ago, and from one day to the next, now the semen just basically <clears throat> dribbles out very small quantities. Thank you so up, much. <laughs> and the orgasm... I'm getting, I'm getting a great visual here. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, and I saw, I went to go see my uh, urologist, and he said that, it's normal for my age, and I right, well, feel on. like something's really wrong. Why do you have a urologist? Excuse me? Why do you have a urologist? You're pretty young to be getting into that. Oh, no. What I was, okay, this happened from one day to the next. I thought there was something wrong with me, so I went to see my uh, regular physician. You went to a urologist. So they sent you to the urologist. Then. Right, I was referred to a urologist. Are you on any medication? No, no, sir, no. Nothing? Nothing at all. The only thing I could say, uh, right before that Steroids. incident, I had a swollen testicle, huh. and uh, they could, the doctor couldn't figure out what it, what, what caused it. He gave me an antiseptic because he said I had a urinary tract infection also, and that and the antiseptic cleared everything up. But soon after that, is, is there any irritation of the penis, of the, the shaft all. of the penis? No irritation along the <laughs> along the what? Well, no. He uh, said uh, here's no. the deal. It, 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 this is where I'm thinking. He, he had a bad line, so I put him uh, on he, hold. He probably had epididymitis, which is sort of an inflammation or infection of the, the top of the testy. And sometimes that can be associated with prostate infections, and occasionally the penis can become irritated and flanded and cause sort of a, a form of peronies, where they get little areas of irritation on the shaft, and it can make difficulty with arousal and erection. And sometimes yeah. as simple as being on an anti-inflammatory and taking vitamin E. I think he's using drugs. That. But but what now? How does it, let me ask you this? Different guys have uh, different abilities in terms of uh, projecting their semen. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. and uh, different ranges. It's a strange thing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem to be connected to any other part of the body. Meaning, a bigger, stronger guy's semen <laughs> wouldn't necessarily come out further, <laughs> bigger and stronger than than a than a weaker man, right? Mm-hmm. But eventually, that's got to drop off as 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 you get older. I, I mean, I haven't seen many guys in their 80s beating off, <laughs> and I haven't certainly don't have anything. <laughs> Thank 50. God for that. Except for the, I said many. The right. guys that engage uh, in that vin- ventriloquism. I have no idea what you're talking about. He's making up words again. But here's my point. What are you talking about, ventriloquism? Yeah. Drew, Drew must have heard that somewhere. And it's Come on, Drew. Spitting it, spitting it out. <laughs> I know, but what does that mean? How does that mean, ventriloquism? Ven- ventriloquism, who can project their voice wherever they want. Oh, ventriloquism. Oh, gotcha. Mr. Smart guy. I, no, that's, nice that's fine, except for I didn't know what, how it pertained <laughs> to the 80-year-old guys. I see. That, that's where the confusion I was. See. If you'd, if you'd said earlier. it earlier, yeah. But that's not bad. Not bad. Throwing your jism. Yeah, right. <laughs> ventriloquism. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, okay. Now... When you're 80, I'm guessing it's not coming out as far as it was when you were 15 or 17. Right. Right? Yeah, but it, they, but they, they go from like 10 feet to it's dribbling a slow thing, in about yeah. a week. It's usually not a sudden thing. Right. And it's usually not at 35. Okay. A couple of years later. Well, the point is he has a urologist. I, I'm, yeah, I'm a little dismayed that they didn't try some things and look into a little more. They just sort of blew them off like, yeah, no big deal. Because well, it, it's, it's we'll something. listen to him. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, you mean it's something that this is uh, happening? It, it means something, yeah. I, I think it deserves a real explanation. Well, what is the muscle that propels the semen? The pubococcygeal muscle. But it's not so much the... It's also the, the, plumbing. the, the plumbing. Yeah, the plumbing, too. And, and the level of arousal and erection. There's a lot of stuff goes into it. So might he seek a second opinion? I think it's a great idea. Like I said, I think there might be a Peronis and an epididymitis and some other stuff. Okay, so Al, be. seek a second opinion. I know you thought that's what you were doing tonight, but you were wrong. Maybe 800 units. Deadly it wrong. takes 800 units of vitamin E in the meantime. Seek a third so, opinion. The that, second opinion is... Right, right. take vitamin E. That's harmless. Right. It might help. Kenneth, you're 14? Yeah. We, uh, you want to know if it's okay to masturbate in the pool? Yeah, because of the chlorine and stuff. Okay, who's, hold who's on. Pool? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like a community pool. Like, oh, nice. Good times. Yes. Good times. <laughs> yeah, whip it out of the community pool. Good idea. How much privacy do you have in that community <laughs> pool? No, it's like they're, they're pretty secluded little pools. <laughs> Uh, Pretty secluded little pools. Oh, come on, man. All right, let's. Uh, All right, hang resume. on. Yes, hang on. This is why uh, 
This is why you got to stay out of those public pools because uh, it's either 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 you get raped or worse. I'm putting this under the worst category. Jay McGraw is our guest tonight. He has uh, written himself a book, Closing the Gap. It's a uh, strategy to bring parents and teens together. And uh, we'll talk more with him and uh, more with Kenneth and his pool procedure after this. Everybody, love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Jay McGraw is here tonight. He is a uh, young author. Closing the Gap is the name of his uh, latest book, a strategy for bringing parents and teens together. Jay's dad, uh, you know, is uh, Dr. Big Phil, ball, right? Yeah. yeah. From uh, Oprah, and uh, going to have his own show in uh, September, which I thought would be in its fifth season by <laughs> September. But. Uh, Going to uh, tell hey, you know every time I see your dad, I just think of uh, I think of uh, Winchester from uh, Mash, <laughs> and it, it, it becomes distracting for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I think of the the Hey Now guy, Hank Kingsley. From, yes, uh, Hey Now, <laughs> better. <laughs> yes, he's he has, he's more of him That's than right. he is of Winchester. You're exactly right, <laughs> Kenneth. Yeah. Okay, so you you claim to beat off in a public pool. It's not, like, really public. All right, let's not argue about but that. But it's not in your backyard. How many people swim in this pool per day, let's say? Like, one person, maybe. One person per day. Are they, like, fronds, or are they actually cement, you know, yeah. gal- you know gunited swimming pools? No, they're actual pools. All right. Um, How are there multiple? Like, come on, where are you going? Well, I don't know. It's just, like, it feels, a little, it feels like kind of cool. It feels what? All right. Here, here's the point of this show. The point of this show is, is we're human beings, and we have non-humans calling this show, <laughs> and non-humans speak in their own language. Okay. Uh, and we, as human beings, have difficulty glossing over a lot of the stuff that I the see. people say. I beat off in a public pool, <laughs> but it's not public. What kind of public pool is this? Well, it's not really a public pool. Well, whose pool is it? Well, it's not mine. Well, how many people go in there? Well, maybe Just one. Me. And we're all so caught on that. <laughs> and it's, and I'm, I'm caught on it just as much as you guys are because now I got to know. I, I know. Where is this pool? Is it at school? <laughs> is it at the Y? Is it at some park that's seldom used? It's not his own. It's not his neighbor's. Where is this magical? One man pool. One yeah, man, one man pool. pool. I think the county built it for him. Now, this, unfortunately, because uh, our callers, a lot of them are subhuman, as I've said, this does not seem peculiar to our callers at all, and they will keep moving forward. I heard one of your calls last night where they actually invented a new unit of measurement. <laughs> yes, the guy was 5'12". 5'12", <laughs> nearly 6 feet. Nearly 6. I'm like, nice. 5'12". <laughs> that was last night. So, oh, now yes. we, because we're all fixated, and our, um, I'll assume that our sober listeners are fixated on this, too. I got to know. So, you guys just be wait, quiet. Wait, 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 wait. And let, let me get the let, answer. Let me, let me, first, this, let me first answer his question. Let's get that over with, and then we can get on with the information we want. Okay. First of all, it will not hurt him to masturbate in the pool. <laughs> it will not. People have sex in a the pool. Their penises survive. Right. Uh, I worry about everyone else and the other person that might use the pool the next day <laughs> yeah but, but the, the 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 chlorine content will kill whatever's in there but come on you want, you want to be the one in the pool next day i'm not encouraging this guy to no i wouldn't do it so no, get but okay now but according to him it's only one guy who uses the pool and he's probably beating <laughs> off too right, that's six yeah. kenneth yeah i'm going to ask you a series of questions so we can try <laughs> to determine where this pool is and what this pool is okay all right, all right now stay with me is it somehow related to school? No. No. Is it involved with the <laughs> municipal park system? No. No. Well, is it that, a... that was a funny question, Adam. How dare you? Okay. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You're a funny guy. I'm sorry. You realize I have to explore every angle. Hide the comedian. Is it you. on the, your property? Um, yeah, sort of. It, it's sort like, of. <laughs> all right, I'll explain. It's like a community, and it's a homeowner's community, and there's like oh. four in the place. So it's like a condominium. Yeah. Okay, so it's a pool at your condo. Yeah. And there are multiple pools? Yeah. Are you talking about the jacuzzi? Mm, they have a jacuzzi in the pool, but yeah. That's... And only one person uses the pool? Hold on, hold on. It's because there's nobody there when he's there. Listen, Dillweed, <laughs> are, are we talking about the jacuzzi? No. Pool. <laughs> yes, I, I see. Okay, oh, so please. if when next time Drew says, are we talking about a jacuzzi, don't say, 
There's a jacuzzi there. <laughs> and a pool. It, it, it's, this is how you play 20 questions. Is this, is this some sort of singing? Is this a celebrity that might have... He has been on TV, but he does not have a TV show. <laughs> right, that's 19. Next, who's next? Jay? Jesus Christ. Mm. Oh, just this, look, just beat off into a rag and then <laughs> sniff it. That's my advice to you, you idiot. Oh, Carlos? Yeah. Just say you're beating off at, your, at the pool that's in your, in your condo. <laughs> Go ahead, Carlos. You're 17. Well, first of all, I'd like to say you guys are great, both of you. Um, oh, thanks. Now, my question was, my girlfriend called about a month ago, and she wanted to know what she could do for her birth control, which one, which one would be good, and she mentioned that I did research on the Internet and found that it could cause breast cancer. Oh, yes, I do remember, I remember this, this call. Too, yeah. yeah, and then um, Drew said that the information was wrong and there's a million things on there, right? No, no, what I said yes. was that if she had pre very uh, high probability of cancer, like her, all her sisters and her mother and her grandparents, yes, then definitely it'd be something to look into. But as a cause of breast cancer, that is something that is highly unlikely and certainly not been proven. Oh, okay, yes, I didn't, she, didn't, she didn't mention that um, her family does have um, a of all of her sisters and her, her mother and her grandmother well her mother her mother yes and her grandmother now her sister she doesn't have any sisters and her mother how old were the mother and grandmother when they had it um i don't recall her mother maybe 40 35 but she passed away about 10 years ago or all something. right so as a young woman that that's something that certainly is so, worth looking into she ought to be already being screened for the yeah, cancer she, yeah i think she is screened all right she said she was screened like every year when she was little, but I don't think she's done it for a good two well, years. Well, which is little does <laughs> not relevant. Here's an idea. Let's wait till it's relevant and quit doing it. Yeah. <laughs> wait tough. a minute. Car Carlos? Yeah? Her mother passed away of breast cancer. Yeah. And her grandmother passed away of breast cancer. Yeah. On okay. her side, yeah. And she was being screened for breast cancer when she was little? A child? Well, not, I, don't, I don't think so. I'm not really sure. No, she wasn't. Okay, let's be clear about it. She but wasn't. I mean, I, I'm sure that she mentioned to me that, I mean, they were, they were like, trying to watch her for that. And, yeah. Okay, and so, so hormonal birth control would not be good for her? Might not. It's a decision that should be made with her doctor. It's, it's a special case. And, in fact... There may need to be some more aggressive sort of interventions for her. I mean, no. for instance, people might use estrogen block and like tamoxifen. They might do yeah. mastectomies, pre you know, sort no. of preemptively. She was, she was trying to get a, um, the injection. What's it called? Um, Depo Provera. Uh, I'm not sure. The one that's three months. Depo Provera. Yeah, Depo. Okay. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Depo. <laughs> <laughs> it's all pull. It's just it's got to be pulling teeth, yeah, even if you get it right. Oh. It's, it's the, teeth the pulling. Thing was, it was hard because it was since. Her parents don't know, and it's going to be like at a Planned Parenthood, so it's like kind of hard to hide it. I mean, kind of hard to get it through like doctors and get really good help, you know? No. Why is it hard? Well, because I mean, would would they help be able to help us out at a, yes at Planned Parenthood at Planned Parenthood or her usual doctor, whoever screening her for the breast cancer? She should be able to talk to completely confidential. I know, but the thing is, it's hard for her because her it's like her parents keep her like on like really locked down. Then why doesn't she call that doctor and talk to him or her? I mean, I don't Just know. call him on the phone and say, how would, it, how would it feel? How Are you okay with me going to Planned Parenthood and getting the shot? Is that a smart thing for me to do, or is that going to interfere with this screening process we're involved with? Okay? Okay. okay. Well, would, would they, if she doesn't do that, would... would Just do that. Just do that. It, it's a, that's the thing. I don't think she can. I mean, it's really, really locked. She down. can't use a telephone? Huh? I mean, I don't even get... To if if she can't... Hey, hey, whoa, okay, whoa. Well, if she on. can't How are you humping her yeah, if you can't even talk to her? If she can't her. even call a doctor, you don't need birth control. Huh? Yeah. Well, how do you hump her? Well, like, during... I, Recess? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Well, then there's also phones around during then recess. Skip a day. Skip a day and call the doctor. Okay. Seriously. She needs to... It's, it's a decision she needs to make with her doctor. It probably is fine. Well, but listen, I, I wouldn't know, say just run the plan for it and do it in a special situation like that. Okay. Maybe you guys shouldn't be getting it on if, 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 you know, getting it on if she's having that much difficulty breaking away from her family. <laughs> but, you know, some of the, the, the parents are like that. Yeah. She's looking for anything to do. Hey, Alex? Hey. You're 14? Yeah. You uh, tried your dad's Viagra two weeks ago? <laughs> yeah. Now you can't I, I get an erection? Like. What'd you do? Take one pill? Yeah. And what was it like? I got this like huge boner, you know. 
Yeah. And then, then like, um, I, I can't get an erection anymore. It's been like two weeks like this. What'd you do what? with that boner of yours? <laughs> it jacked off. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Oh, no, wait, what do you mean a huge boner? What does that mean? It's really <laughs> a good boner. No, what does that mean? You know how you get one and like, it was just like really bulging, you know, kind of bulging out there, you know? Sometimes you don't get that. Yeah. It's kind of just That's smaller. a damn lie and you know it! Drew, Drew doesn't buy it. <laughs> how long did it last? Um, like an hour. What color is the pill? Color is the pill beige. No. Nope. It's a damn lie, and you know it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, blue. Sorry, buddy. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good angle that beige, but you know, if you really think about pills, beige. they don't do beige. They no. do white, and well, then no, they, they go beige. into colors. Xanax yeah. is beige, but that's about the only one I know. Of. Really? And blood pressure pills are beige. All right. But All right. but be that as it may, the Viagra is known for being blue. That and the fact that people when they have a Viagra experience, they don't talk about this. <laughs> they talk about how long it lasts. No, he meant he yeah. meant a good boner. But it won't go away when you jack off. And okay. he, did, he, made, he talked about jack off, so that's what I did with it, and that was the end of it. No, no, no. no. Drew, don't, hold on a second. Don't give yourself credit for that. <laughs> I busted this punk with the color of the pill question. How dare <laughs> you? Didn't I prompt you, you know to go it. after him a little bit? Yes, you, okay. you, were, you were suspicious. I'll give you that. Okay. Well, uh, Jay McRoss here. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. More penis talk. Everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Jay McGraw is our guest tonight. Jay's the author of Closing the Gap, a strategy for bringing parents and teens together. This is a must read. That's right. For every teen and their parents. That's right. And, and even folks that aren't teens and don't can't read. have kids or yeah. can't read. It's a must look at. That's right. It's a must flip. Jay's uh, father, of course, is uh, Phil, who you uh, know as. Uh, Hank from uh, <laughs> Hey Now. Hey Now. <laughs> the Larry Sanders Show. No, from uh, the famous uh, Oprah Show, and uh, we'll be doing his own show in uh, September. And uh, if you got some problems with your old lady, you call that show up, Dr. Phil. That's right. Okay, yeah. Jay, has uh, anyone talked to you about doing a TV show? Uh, I've talked to a few people about that. How's that going? Um, I've talked to a few people about that. <laughs> Finishing law school. Yeah, I'm in law school now. Um, fun, fun. Oh man, that I got to start good. back on Thursday. What a nightmare! That's got to oh. suck. I get to go do all that. Well, whatever. Can you do? Listen, can you be be one of these good lawyers? Yeah, <laughs> you know, because I just realized people. I actually, I, I think the lawyers get a lot of crap for ruining this country, right. which is definitely happening. But um, it's also the fault of the system and the folks that are bringing the lawsuits. Yes. Oh, right. yes. I, I went to a uh, juice place uh, the other day, <laughs> oh, ordered a bunch of juice, was out on the road. I was driving out of town, mm -hmm. and I had to take a wicked leak, and I just got done ordering 20 bucks worth of celery juice from this chick. <laughs> and I, like I said, I was, I was out in the middle of nowhere, and I was halfway to where I was going, and I said, uh, can I step back there and take a leak? And she said, uh I, they probably trained him not to say this, but the chick was 17 and wasn't thinking too good. And she goes, she goes, no, because um, you, you could slip. And I realized somebody gave her nice. serious talking yeah. to about we are insured for uh, staff only. only going back there. Right. And customers cannot go back and take a leak because they could slip and then they could sue and then we could be closed down. And so here's the situation. People look at this stuff, and I, I know it sounds cliche when I say how does you know how everything affects you, but here's how it affects you. You can't take a leak at a place anymore. You can go into oh, a business, you can patronize okay. the business, I've heard you can spend a bunch of money, but you cannot take a leak there. And now you're walking around the mall like a retard <laughs> looking for a place to take a leak. Well, that's what you get for going to the mall. Wait, can I go off on something now along yes, the same lines? Because Random searches. Random searches. Oh, at man. The airport. At the airport. It happened to me on the way here. I every, it happens to me every time I walk through. So, as usual, I walk through. Except this time, I had the added delight of the servicemen with the machine guns yeah. walking up to me and asking me for an autograph. Oh, yes. As the guy does the search and then adds for three more bag searches to follow that. 
Right. Oh, well, right. the meantime, I'm shooting the breeze with the with the with, actual Marines. With, yeah, with well, the Marines. This country has a rich history in C list celebrities blowing up blowing up airplanes. <laughs> That's yeah, right. I took him to take my shoes off, put him through the belt. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. No, my girlfriend had to yeah. take off her boots. It was nice. Okay. Nice. Checking I, them out. I, were the Marines up in there? Uh, uh, yeah. Asking for your autograph. There weren't any Marines. I I don't have any Marines in Dallas. Uh-huh. We got we got the shaft on the Marines. What do you got over there? We got no we got no machine guns in our airport. I didn't what? see one machine gun. They were there. I'm all like, you know, yeah, walking through the airport. I'm like, let me see some machine guns. Listen, None. listen, everybody. Oh, I, this political correctness, it, you know, it, it drives me insane. I mean, listen, here is the deal. We should be looking for the number one causer of any problem, and that's who we should be pulling over. I mean, I'm see- I'm at the airport. I'm seeing some chick looks like Sandy Duncan, <laughs> postmenopausal <laughs> white chicks with red hair. Peter Pan. You know, she has the she has the bangs and she's white as a ghost. She has those bad big mom glasses on. She can barely lift her arms. Oh, she's I so know. weak, you know. And this guy's panning her down. Here's what I'm saying: until one of those old white bitches blows up the plane, she's on. She's on. He's on. I mean, look. What are we doing? What are we? Do- here's here's all I'm saying. Here's all I want to know. Here's the question I want to answer. What is the objective? Yes. Is what are we attempting to be to random? Do? To be random. To be random. No, yes. I don't to want random. random. I want, I don't I want, want any planes blown up. up. I don't. No. Yes. The objective is not to be random. <laughs> it's to stop people from blowing yes. up planes. There you go. And They're frisking me and Dr. Drew and yes. some guy in fatigue oh, comes too. waltzing on the airplane, you know? I, I got the same guys hit me up. He's <laughs> wanting a picture and he's, <laughs> he's he's going through my bag as he's discussing this yes. with me. Oh, and no. I don't want that. I don't think, here's what I don't think. I don't think anybody wants that except for terrorists. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Arabs want that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Not if they're flying. Not if anyone who's yeah. flying should not want that. And it 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 it's it, it's how it's how this sort of political correctness will ultimately cost us lives yes. in this country. And listen, it is I agree it is discrimination when you decide that a certain group is doing something and stop that group. But it is not discrimination when only that group causes a certain crime and you take a closer look at that group. Because everyone ask yourself, why are we taking a closer look at Arab males well, they, between 18 and 40 who are going through airports? They were doing that in Dallas. It's like everybody was walking right on the airplane. They had a table set up next to the gate and, and they had all the Arabs. Yeah. Oh, no, no. No, 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 no. I'm, I asked. Oh, really? Everybody of Arab descent had their bags. Good. Good. That's fine. Well, that's, Dallas. that's fine. That's fine. I love Dallas. that. Dallas. Oh, kiss. Hey, right. no, da- Dallas is great. It's like that's right. Kennedy Texas. gets shot. It's like good, <laughs> good. <laughs> Look, I, I'm. I have. I have. Oh, I have no. I have no <clears throat> difficulty with that concept at all. And you know what? If people go, yeah. Well, you're a white male, so you don't care. Well, listen. Uh, as a white male, I'm fine with all the Asian females not even having to walk through the metal detector. <laughs> I'm fine with <laughs> I'm fine with all in, until an oh. Asian female c- causes a crime. I'm fine with them just getting onto the plane, just uh, walking oh. straight. Not they get to walk around. There's a line that says Asian females. There's an arrow. Go on by, honey. It's like a turnstile. Mama son, get right on that plane until one of you does. Uh, you know, steals a pack oh, of Wrigley's. Shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we all would be. I, I'm uncomfortable with the the table for Arab Americans. I think, but I think though, you haven't to, seen it though. Well, oh, I've been have, I've been at that table every time I get on a plane. Well, but you're not an Arab American. But it I, doesn't, that's my it doesn't point. say ter- it doesn't say table for Arabs. Does no. It? Yes, one of my friends, Arab American. She's over there getting her bag searched. But it's it's only for I mean every yes. single I, good. Hundred percent of the Arabs go over there. And 100 percent of the non Arabs walk right and on how the How do they airplane. tell who's Arab and who's not? Too. That's I right. don't. Yeah, that's I don't know. Well, anyone who's anyone who has a, that complexion, well, I, I must look just pull that. over. I'm at the table every plane. All right, and really? by people who are like wanting autographs. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's save the babies. All right. All right. Let's save them babies. Let's. Uh, okay. Nathan. Yeah. You're 23. I am. What's All up? Right. How you doing? Good. Good. Um. I don't have wet dreams. Like, they happen every once in a while, like maybe once every two months or so. Well, you're 23. 
Yeah. You usually get over that around 14. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Sweet. I used to be sexually active like a couple years ago. It's about the last time I've, I've had sex. Yeah. And then I find myself waking up just as I'm about to climax, I guess you could say. And I find myself like holding off like, no, don't. And it's only like seldom that it does happen. You're holding off because you don't want to lose your chi? I don't know. <laughs> do, you, do you actually audibly say no, don't? <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Oh, That'd be man, funny. That would have been great. Yeah, that would be. All right. Like, so what? Sleep as I'm waking up. It's like, and then it's. All right. So what? You haven't gotten laid in a long time, and you're horny when you go to bed. Wouldn't that be all the more reason for it to happen now? Yes. Yeah. Well, you're getting so pretty close. You're hold, what are you holding off on? Uh, it's it's not like I'm holding off. I, it's, it's like mid, like as I'm waking up, and then as soon as I come, I like wake up and realize what's going on. He stops. It's, it's just that's it. Is he um, not mm -hmm. masturbating? Nope, I don't. Let's see. Yeah, why don't you? <laughs> uh, probably religious things. Uh oh. What do you got going? <laughs> um, there's one thing I was thinking of a while ago, about a year and a half, two years ago. I went on a six week cycle of uh, anabolic steroids. Oof. And then they have the, I don't remember like specific names, but the one type that kind of reenacts that, that part of the body, so to speak. Well, when you were on the androgenic hormone, I'm sure you had lots of wet dreams. Um, right? Actually, no, I didn't. If you, and you weren't masturbating then? Or you were having sex then, though? Uh, I think I did, like, once or twice then. Hey, Nathan, what about religion and, you know, your body's a temple and all that stuff? <laughs> right. And taking well, a bunch of steroids. Yeah. yeah. Those Don't are the in here. They what? Those were the bad days. The None bad of us days. are perfect. All right. Well, Jesus is perfect, right? He the world was. flawed. Hey, Nathan? Yeah. All right, drop the religious stuff. Start beating off and see if you can get laid, would you? What's up with the women? Why aren't you... Are you dating? Uh, not right now. I'm not, actually. How come? Yeah. Uh, just in between relationships. Okay. How long That's is that the time to date, right? What's that? Isn't that time people yeah. date is in between relationships? <laughs> Good point. Well, yeah, well I, I don't know if you meant, like, exclusively dating somebody. Are you going out with people? Uh, no, not right. <laughs> so either way, yeah. the answer is no. Either way, no. <laughs> All right. Well, what's up? What, how how long has it been? How long has it been since you've like been years with a female? A couple of years. Not very long. Like what's not very long? Come on. Eight months, maybe seven months. <laughs> Ooh, uh, dude, that's that long. A long time, comparatively speaking. Yeah. Well, listen, it's long when you're uh, in med school and, and uh, you know, pr you know, law school and everything. It's not long when you're <laughs> Nate the Geek from Connecticut. <laughs> what are you doing with your life, oh, Nathan? Just trying to figure that out. Okay. Well, well somebody go out with Nate. Look, <laughs> Nate, please, please don't get buried in this religion. Right. Okay? You understand? Yeah, I'm picking it, up what you're putting down. It just becomes some weird compensation, okay? <laughs> yeah. you, you can create your own laws well, to live it, by. So so do you think maybe, like, the whole problem is just, like, like a, a mental thing, or is it just, like, something's... I, I don't see what the problem is. Here, Here's the situation, as I understand it. Okay. Nathan is not masturbating, and he's not having sex, so he has some energy so and has, some fluid built up in right. it. So he goes to bed and naturally has an erotic dream, and he becomes aroused, and he gets very excited, but he's probably not such a heavy sleeper that he doesn't wake up before the action, much like wetting your bed. Right. There are times, you know, a, a lot of us wake up in the middle of the night to urinate, <laughs> but we don't wet ourselves, except for me, right. on, on more times than I like to admit. But that's another that's story. That's a whole other story. You know, the, the, the point is, is your, your body doesn't really like to do stuff while you're asleep, right. whether it be number two, number one, or what is that, three? I'd the go semen. Number four, yeah. I go four. Oh, you go four? four? Oh. What's three, then? I don't know. We skipped that one. <laughs> All right, so semen is number four? Yeah. you got to give it a jump point is, is your body will wake up before it does things oftentimes, and that's what's going on with him. Now, you want to get rid of this? Start beating off before you go to bed. <laughs> there you go. Or <laughs> you want to see it through and take a quaalude. And uh, down it with like a fifth and, and knock yourself out. You'll jizz all over yourself. <laughs> You'll just miss it. Yeah, but little. prop yourself up because we don't want you to drown before you wake right. up. But, but uh, he's concerned, though, that, that maybe because of the steroids, there's not enough stuff coming out of him. You see what he's saying? No, I didn't, wrong I didn't get that part about it. He's sort of going down that path. What's wrong with me? I, I don't masturbate. I, I didn't I, get I don't enough don't... stuff. <laughs> Nathan? No stuff. Yeah. Was that your one of your concerns that not enough stuff was coming out no no like the concern i had was i was told when i bought the the cycle like there was the type that i was using and then they said near the end of the cycle take this stuff with it and that'll help uh 
because I guess when you're taking the steroid, your body like sort of shuts down because it notices you have a lot of that. That um. Yes. All right. He said nothing. He said yeah. zero. He's sort of going down that things are shut down route. But maybe I, maybe I shut myself down, kind of thing. Okay. So. Uh, no idea. Winston. Oh, thank God, I don't care. <laughs> yep. I just, you know what? I leave the studio, the door shuts, I start thinking about cars, and that's <laughs> model it. Model airplanes. And model yeah, airplanes, yeah. I just drive home smiling and, and laughing. And and masturbating. No, I am masturbating. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't think about it. He just no, doesn't. I'm doing it. No. Winston? Yep. So what's up? 24. Cars. Talk fast, Winston. i got to take the leak. I do, too. Um, my question is, uh, I've, I've got asthma, and with asthma, a lot of times you get eczema, right. and uh, I've had it deep all breath, my life. But deep breath, Winston. <laughs> what's I can that? hear it. What? Nothing. You're having? Are you having an asthma attack right now? No, no, no. I'm just nervous. Right. But, okay. um, so I get it a lot of times on my penis and the it's eczema. Kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of awkward and some, or it's, you know, and having to explain it to a girlfriend that it's Wait. normal and it's not any kind of STD or. Right. What's Hang this on, speaking? Drew. What is ex What is this? It it's an allergic reaction. He's got what's called atopy. So he has sinus asthma and eczema. Right. right. What's eczema, though? And it's a an inflammatory reaction to the skin. It looked like okay. a red patch, basically. I can understand the difficulty in explaining that one. Yeah. And True. just why why the asthma and the eczema connection? The three is just all allergy, allergic skin reaction. Oh, okay. It's, he's highly allergic. Okay. And you just need to why don't you use a bunch of the steroid creams on the penis? Oh, I do actually, and 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 it doesn't. I mean, it works, but it's something I just have to do every day. And right. It just comes back immediately afterwards. Right. And you have a girlfriend? No, no. I have before, yeah. All right. But they, they, they'll they understand that you have a condition. They're not going to think it's herpes. And Well, they, they might, though. Yeah. And, and well, they, they might, but not when, when they see what a mess you are, I mean, they'll understand. <laughs> you say, here it is on my chest, yeah. here it is on my Yeah, you show, them the, you, show them, you show them the state of Texas on your back. <laughs> in bright red and they'll understand that this is a condition plus you're sucking off an inhaler i mean they should feel sorry for you and give you oral at that point all right buddy all right, there's nothing you can do more than the steroid cream drew sun is good for eczema but i don't know if you want to get how you do that yeah it's good for psoriasis oh psoriasis yeah. sorry what is wrong no no it's all right with uh, all right all right buddy hey i'm sorry good you're, luck. you're that like sucks. Uh, cursed I would look yeah. at this as a curse. I, I agree with you on that, Adam. But it's not that big. It's just <laughs> eczema. All right, it's just not, eczema. Yeah. Why on the penis? Because it's because yeah, like there's too. skin on the penis. <laughs> and but, it's but everywhere else too. I'm do you sure. get do you get it everywhere else, Winston? No, no. Just on the penis? No, really? I get it on my nipples, and my armpits too. Sometimes. Yeah, a little yeasty on the pecker roof. <laughs> really? Yeah. Nipple, nipples. Well, is there anything your penis is touching? Are you allergic to latex? Do you wear a condom? No, I don't know. You don't wear a condom. Well, I mean, I do, but I just, it's been a while. Okay. And you True. still get it on the penis. Well, Could well, it be the, something like underwear or the cotton or the or the uh, detergent, maybe? I mean, you really got to search for whatever your penis is touching. Go commando for a while, see if that works. Yeah, that might be affecting your uh, skin. What? Uh, no, I, I mean, I was just thinking of this. It, it's it's allergic, the eczema is allergic reaction basically, yeah. to something that it came in contact with. Possibly. Or something that he's eating, maybe? No? Mm, possibly. But he has the breakouts all the time, yeah. and it's in the same I area. Know, it know. doesn't seem like it's something environmental, because if it, if it was the sheets or his underpants or something, it just seemed like his legs would get it or his ass would get it. Yeah. It just seems, all right, I, I don't I know. I mean, it's, it's a highly uh, immunologically active person, allergic person, and so, you know. It could be all kinds of things. Don't, don't they say your body chemistry changes every seven years or so? Yeah. These, they get better as they get older off time. They do? Yeah. Okay. What a ripoff. Let's uh, talk to uh, James, who's uh, 20. James? Yes. Your uh, father left 19 years ago. Which would be when you were one? Oh, uh, like six months or something like that. And you want to find the guy? Yeah, well, I'm debating if I should or not because, like, my mom and all, my whole family says I shouldn't. Why do they say that? Um, basically, my mom's... Well, was Way back then, my dad pulled a gun on my mom. Okay. What but side of it was he holding? What's that? I see. And he, they, he's a bad guy who abandoned oh. you. Oh, yeah. My yeah. mom is really the only one that really knows him. <clears throat> my whole other family's only met him like a couple times, I guess. Why do you want and to find him? 
Well, I just want to know that side of my family. Plus, why? Mom says, That's not an answer. Know, yeah, why? Yeah, because I just want to know him. Why? Well, also, I know I have brothers from him. So find them. Know. Why do you want to find your father? Well, I can't find... I don't know how to do it. No, why do you want to find your father? He doesn't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey James! Oh, that's right. He's got brothers. <laughs> James, here's why. Here's here's our reaction because we do hear this a lot, and yeah. and and it and it's it's very sad. And and I again, I was something that I was uh, thinking about and talking about earlier today. I have uh, friends who are in this situation too, which is, and we get this all the time on this show. Um, one parent basically cuts out and leaves, abandons their kid, and they leave them to fend. Here's the part I like. I like when the guy says, your mom is a crazy bitch, and I could not hang with that crazy psycho bitch. So I let her raise you when I went to Florida. <laughs> yeah. so, hey, thanks, Pops. Yeah. Great. You couldn't hang. You, you, is, a, you as an, an, an adult male who probably <laughs> who could have you know physically handled her if she'd ever tried to come at you cut out but you left me at uh, age one or two or three or five with the myself. crazy psycho <laughs> bitch okay thanks pops so what happens is is psycho bitch raises the kid yeah. and of course the kid's got two parents and one of them he knows he hates because she <laughs> raised him and she's a psycho bitch but the other one becomes like mystical like the oh, lone the, ranger the illusion yeah, like yeah. The, the mirage idealized the mirage. idealized yeah. right right it's dad and they're they're grasping for straws i mean they're right. looking for something in their life so where is this great guy and what happened probably you know in vietnam he probably jumped on a grenade saving his platoon and got right. some brain damage and then had trouble coping with society no, he had so amnesia he had amnesia child, right right no, the guy's a drunken, violent idiot. He pulled a gun on your yeah, mom leaving and got out of there. Plus, it's like a blessing that he's yes. done. Yes, oh, and here, yeah. here's the question. What efforts has he made to get hold of you in the last yeah. 20 years? That's that's a good question and to ask. Or to pay. The best, the best that's going to happen is you're going to find him and he's going to be an acquaintance. He's not going to turn up 20 years later and be the father figure you never had. Oh. So. No, and listen, you, you think this guy's going to pull in in a, a vintage uh, Austin Healy from the 50s <laughs> smoking See? a pipe with a scarf blowing in the wind. Hey, son, let's go to a baseball game. Wearing a hunting jacket <laughs> with a beautiful young trophy wife as he revs the engine and there's and a one for you in the back packed picnic basket <laughs> and her younger sister in the boot of the car you guys are going to the country to go skeet shooting and oh. uh, build a log home and the dog's coming with us no this guy lives in a one bedroom trailer van trailer. right he's a trailer he's yes. living in a van down by the river that's right I, I say F him, and don't get him built up. You will only right. be more disappointed. Well, actually, if he wants to build him up, I, I don't have a problem yeah, with hey, that build so him much. Up. Just don't find him. Don't find, all right, don't find him. Yeah. And if you let, do let want to find be. him, go let calm that fantasy the, be if that helps you. Yeah. Okay. Go calm the jail cells and the trailer parks. And right. And if you want to... might be around somewhere. If you want to get hold of your brothers, that's another situation. And I would even caution you about that. Yeah. But if you want to yeah. talk to them, fine. But you still don't have to involve him. And oh, yeah. same Why? thing. If you find them, they're not going to be brothers. They're just yeah. going to be people that you met today. Right. So don't don't have an unreason unreasonable expectation to that either. Absolutely. All right. We'll be back. Oh, thank God. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Jay McGraw is our guest tonight. He's the uh, author of uh, Closing the Gap, a strategy for bringing parents and teens together. And uh, the book is uh, out everywhere, correct? That's Jay? right. Amazon.com, all the bookstores, everywhere. So uh, how long has it been out? It came out uh, just before Thanksgiving. How's it doing? It's doing pretty well. I've been having to take finals, so I can't exactly tell a lot of people about it, but it's yeah. kind of a ripoff. You know, why? Why be an attorney? Though? Why don't you just sit good, around and write books? Good damn question. I <laughs> ask myself no, that every. That. I ask myself that every day in class. I'm like, you know. You know what though? If you don't do that kind of training now, you ain't never gonna do it. No, I would never go back. You know what I'm saying, Adam? I, you don't know what we're saying. No, I know what you're saying. <laughs> I had that theory when I was 17. <laughs> <laughs> so who are you talking about? I pioneered that thought. Uh, I said that in the fifth grade. You said it, and then you had to stick by it, right? I, I stood by my guns. That's right. I knew uh, me and education it's were a not a good mix. Nightmare. Well, what what kind of law do you want to get into once you uh, get know. into it? I don't know. 
corporate, I guess. Oh. Criminal. And you know what? Everyone <laughs> hates you when you're oh, a lawyer, yeah. too. They all just oh, can't stand you. God, do I hate well, lawyers. not everyone. Oh, you hate lawyers. Well, here's, 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 that onto me. here's why. I, I think here's your relationship with lawyers. Well, you're, either, you're either going to be on the winning side or the losing side <laughs> right, with so them. you're really happy or you're really pissed yeah, off. Either, either they got you $4 million because you pulled a Brody in the bathroom at the Jamba <laughs> Juice, or you're the guy who can't take a leak when he needs to right. at the Jamba Juice. Adam. And I have, that's me. And also, my relationship with lawyers is I don't, you know, I've never used a lawyer. But my relationship is this. I only deal with the lawyers that have to deal with Comedy Central and our TV show and all that. And so they tell you, no, you can't do this. Well, you need to get you a good lawyer that says, yes, he can. But it's not the kind of thing where you can combat the network's lawyer with your personal attorney. They look out for the interest of the corporation or the network and it behooves them to just say no you can't do this but you know the greatest the greatest thing that lawyers do and please don't ever be one of these lawyers the uh that that sort of bizarre universe they live in we're doing a uh, tv show now that involves prank phone calls <laughs> and the show was called prank puppets originally but the word prank according to the lawyer right. for the Comedy Central people, was way too, uh, it was a, a, a too vicious a word. It, 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 prank, <laughs> according to them, oh, nice. it, it implied a maliciousness that would be used in court against right. us. And I said to them, you should hope that the other attorney brings up the word prank <laughs> and tries to dwell on prank. Because prank is the least of our worries. Prank implies... Playful. 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 Yeah, it impli right. implies we're trying to pull one over on a guy, but we don't want to hurt him. Yeah. Well, but see, they can say what you intended to hurt him. The intention of a prank is to hurt somebody. But, but they could say that with any word, though. Oh, yeah, they could. Uh, yeah, but joke the intention of a prank is to pull one over on somebody, <laughs> right. but not, you know, you want to fool the liquor store owner by <laughs> asking if uh, he has uh, Dr. Pepper in a can and then to let him out. Right. But you don't want to burn the place <laughs> down. Right. Okay. Uh, but, you know, the, the one that the lawyers do, which is great is uh, when they ask around uh, yeah like I'm, so they I'm do have to get back to you that they do this around. one you, you go i'm yelling at this 50 year old bitch saying can you are you you really telling me that prank is a dangerous word and they go well you know i asked bert wasserman and bert uh when he heard prank shrugged he couldn't believe it. I mean, I'm thinking, what kind of bizarre alternate universe do you guys live in where Burt Wasserman hears the word prank and goes, oh, oh, oh prank. Oh, my prank. God. Yeah. Heaven forbid you use the word prank. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how is that used? Like, let's try to use that in a military setting. Are, are we would we prank someone when we bomb them or drop the daisy cutter? Would you prank your worst enemy when you try to get a, you know, a mafia hit? Put on? Where's the word prank come in whenever there's an assassination or a serious right. attempt at bodily injury? Is the word prank ever brought up in that context? I'm afraid, I'm afraid not. No, there are pranks gone wrong, <laughs> but they always specify that they've gone wrong. What's the word they want to replace it with? Bert Wasserman said. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'd like, I'd like, I want to get hold of this old Bert Wasserman and beat the crap. Pull a real prank on Bert. Pull his toupee <laughs> off. Yank on his bow tie. But nobody go out and kick the crap out of Bert Wasserman because Adam wants him. Oh, it's like, I can just God. see the scene from Christmas Vacation where Eddie, whose heart's bigger than his brain, goes out and ties the boss up with the bow. And it's, oh. it's all going bad right now, Adam. Oh, these attorneys in this bizarre alternate universe they live in. Yeah. Okay, so anyway. Yeah, anyways, you, that's going on. good. Yeah. Yeah, just stick with the writing. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Angel? Yeah. You're 18? Ooh. Hi, Adam. Hi, Ooh. Ooh. Angel. Um, I'm sorry, but I made up the question. In my yeah, well, oh, Anderson. <laughs> Anderson. So much for that. Cut him off. <laughs> Come on, let's hear what you got to say. No, but um, around two months ago, my cousin's boyfriend broke up with her, and ever since then, she's been depressed. She drinks. She smokes. She doesn't eat. How old is she? She's 23. Nine. Okay. And when she does eat, she makes herself throw up. Okay, well, she's depressed. At least we can say that, right? Yeah, and like I tried to talk to her, but she doesn't want to listen. I was wondering maybe you guys can have some sense into her. Is she there? I could call her on three. We at her house. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, man. This 
Adam, this right here is a sick, bizarro side universe, okay? <laughs> Lawyers don't live in sick, bizarro side universes. Bert Wasserman does. Okay. Hey, Angel? Yeah? How are you doing? Because, you know, I have this theory about girls named Angel. Yeah, There's always trouble. trouble with that voice. <laughs> and yeah, that no little joke. voice. Did you... your parents name you Angel? No. Were you molested? <laughs> uh, Who named you Angel? When did your dad rape you? <laughs> when were you molested? When I was younger. How old? Like six? Mm, I have. I don't remember. Okay. Give me an estimate. What age you were? Oh, well. well how old does she sound? Six. Okay. It's about six. Five, six. Yeah. No. Well, my sister kind of did something to me when I was like eight or nine. And then my dad's friend when I was like um, 10 or 11. Okay. Start about eight. Okay. And um, your dad's friend, huh? Yeah. What about old dad? <sighs> How's um, Talk to my dad. Good. Mm. And um, <coughs> did you talk? Well, you, he was around then. He's still around. Oh, he is. Your mom and he are still married? Yeah, they're in the next room. Oh, you just boy. don't talk to him. Mm -mm. Oof. Okay. Did she say her dad's friend did something or her dad did that friend? No. Oh, did your dad ever do anything? Uh, not that I could recall. Yeah. Okay. So, listen, uh, Angel, um, I know your uh, cousin has some problems right now. But I, I bet you got some problems too. I can I can tell by your voice. Yeah, but I didn't call for me. I was wondering if you guys could I talk. Well, that, that's the beauty of this show. <laughs> we don't we don't we don't go after what you want us to talk about. That's right. We'll we'll decide who screwed up and who we talk to. And so far, you've trumped you your cousin by the by the molestation. <laughs> yeah. So what are you doing Sorry about that? Sorry, your boyfriend broke up with her. Are, are are you able to? Have you talked to anybody about this? I was going to shrink. You were? Yeah. But what happened? I stopped Molested. going. How come? Because I, I don't... Come on, why? Because my dad didn't want me to go. Why? Because he said it was all in my head. Because well, he molested you when you were how old? Huh? Well, I, whatever it is, uh, yes, it's in your head, and that's why you're going to see somebody that specializes in dealing with things that are in well, your head. that's what I said, but I don't know. He's dumb. Was well. he paying for it? No, I was... Well, then, then, keep then going. you go. You need this. Um, but he was my only right over there. Well, then, get, no, no, no. At He's, the time, yeah, I was going when I was like 15. Well, 15. start going again. Hey, Angel. Yeah. How, how were you paying for it? I started working since I was 16. I see. And and are you going to school now? I um, must start college. Gotta? College. Gonna You're going start. to junior college? Yeah. Shocking. And uh, you're still living at home? Yeah. How about uh, moving yeah, no. out? I want to, but... About what? Money. Did, does, um, do you have a boyfriend? Uh, no. Good. <laughs> and uh, are you pregnant? No. Have you ever been? No. Good, yeah. good. Why don't you have a boyfriend? Because guys have too many problems right now. That's right. Is it Angel, you you know, for someone who's been through what you've uh, been through and have the uh, horrible parents that you have, you, you're a pretty good thinker. And uh, I think you need to, you, you know, I know you're going to junior college right now, mm -hmm. but uh, that's just a horrible waste of time for everyone who's there, <laughs> except for the faculty that's just wasting <laughs> away, making a paycheck off of uh, Uncle Sam. <laughs> here's what I think, here's what I would, here's what I think you should do. I would start working full time. Get myself a buddy and a friend move who wants a roommate and move out and start start life away and start looking back into this therapy and Absolutely. these issues. Especially if it was your somebody, your parent who sort of aborted your care and not you, something you wanted to do or still wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, because it is, you're a smart person and you've had a horrible thing happen to you and I think you need <clears throat> to work on that. All right? Yeah. And don't worry so much about your cousin. You yeah, got really. you got you got bigger fish to fry, n namely yourself. Well, I would work full time, but right now I can't because I'm like in and out of a hospital. Psychiatric what? hospital? Excuse me. What kind of hospital? Um, Beverly Hospital. Psychiatric hospital? Uh, no. Um, I have Insane. a problem with my heart. What's the problem with your heart? Yeah. What's um, the problem? Well, the doctor said it beats too fast, and something's not connected. Right? It's loose. And that I might have a murmur. All right, the, the, you, this this thing you have doesn't have a name. He said it, but I just can't remember. Wolf it. Parkinson White syndrome. Mm, I have no idea. Um, 
I'm taking Tropoix out for it. Yeah. Probably Wolf Parkinson White, something like that. What is that? Yeah. It's just an electrical disturbance in the heart. It's not a... I mean, it doesn't mean you can't move out? No, it doesn't. Does it keep her from working full-time? No, it doesn't. Okay, so go get you a full-time job. Angel? Yeah? Get get out of that house. Get 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 some work. Work more hours and get on your own. And then when you get all established, you can get back and uh, go to junior college again. And hey, Angel? Yeah? That cousin that we were going to call? Not a good candidate for a roommate. No. <laughs> oh, by all means. No, no nobody in your family. Yeah. Okay? And nobody you want to fix or make better. Right. Feel sorry Pick somebody for. that you think is, like, oddly normal. Yeah. Boring. Boring. Boring yes, and normal. Yes, exactly. Like, oh, my God, they're so normal. So boring. Ugh. Ugh. Then pick that one and move in with them immediately. Well, I'll tell you that. Uh, and for those of you who are at uh, home thinking, uh, well, there must be something on the screen about the molestation. Oh, no. Nope. Not at all. You just hear that voice, and that means molestation easy you hear that little girl voice sexual abuse done and done every time thank you <laughs> you're welcome jeremiah yeah you're 17 yeah what's up um i was wondering because like my girlfriend moved away because like she lives up here with her dad and then she moved away to texas all and right like, texas how long ago texas so, um whatever <laughs> oh sorry that came out um like about six months ago. To the tune of six months ago? Yeah. Good, good use. <laughs> Nicely done. Well, it takes all kinds, Sherma. Is she asking you to move down to Texas? <laughs> no, well, it was my idea. Yeah, no but kidding. She's like supportive of it. Yeah. Right. And I have a job and everything, I have money saved up. But I'm only a junior, and next year I'm going to be a senior, but I want to spend my senior year with her. Senior year in, uh, of what? College? High school. High, high school. school. High school. Yeah. Oh, so you, you want to go to Texas and go, so, ha, take your senior year there? Yeah. You're going to, whoa, whoa, wait. You're going to pack up and move to Texas with your girlfriend to finish your senior year of high school? Well, I just am going to. I just, that's why I'm calling the show, you know? Yeah. No, right. not, no. We'd say no. Yeah, I'm going to go with no. No. Bad. Survey yeah. says no. Hell no. No. <laughs> Three no's. Yeah, he's calling from Oregon, by the so way. So I'm thinking from no, Oregon. then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, seriously. Come you, you, on. You're going to smother her, and it's too weird. And yeah, dude, don't is, do is that. She, hold on. Is she blowing him off? Yeah. Possibly. Jeremiah, she may be blowing you off. What do you mean, blowing me? What do you mean? She moved away. No, uh, it's just like, because like, this no, is the first no. girl that I've actually like... Yeah, we know about you. Okay, oh, yeah. you love her? Yeah. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> A lot. Well, I, I didn't I know you are obsessed with it. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, I stop, so... So you mean you would be willing to move to Texas? This, to is, your her, this right? is your next b book, uh, yeah. uh, Jay. It's, right. But I love her. <laughs> then, then, after my senior year, we're both going to move up and go to OSU. Well, then no. Then just wait a year and go to OSU together. And Ooh, don't go to OSU. Like, it's Come really on. Hard, like you know the long distance thing. Yeah, it's like, hard. The toughest thing ever. Why did she move away? What? Because uh, cause she, um, she didn't like living with her dad. Oh, oh. Dad, hold on a like, second, dude. <laughs> We're going to have a small discussion oh about my reality God. amongst ourselves. I thought he was going to say her her dad got a gig in Austin right. and they packed up and Made moved. Him go. And yeah. then it was going to be a situation of, well, what are you going to say? What are you going to do? But right. she's she's moving like, I'm getting out of here. Her own and yeah, well, he, there's two possibilities. One, she is total chaos. And just kind of blows where the wind takes her, and uh, you know is completely out of control all the time. Or she's moving on, or she's like, "Oh my God, I got to get away from this guy, and he can't yeah. take a subtle hint. Maybe I'll move seven states away." Well, listen, when you were seventeen, if you were deeply obsessed and in love with someone, and you had a pain in the ass, Dad, you would suck it up and yeah. stay there for or that person you couldn't be with. Or them. what our colleagues do, they get pregnant and and, and right. move in with them. Jeremiah, yeah. Take a has she moved yet, or is she going to move? Six months she's gone. No, no, she's been gone. Six months. Right. And that's why it's so hard, because, yeah. like, the long distance thing is killing me. And have like, you have you told her you're coming up there? Well, we've talked about a lot, you know, about, like, the plans and stuff, and I really want to, you know. I think it's probably, like, because right now she, uh, she did live in, like, uh, New Mexico. Right. And then, like, it was a really bad town, so she, they, like, her mom her and her, and her little brother packed up, you know, and left. <laughs> she, right. She, they're nomads. Because she had family in Texas, you know? Right. And right now she's, she's living with family, with her aunt or whatever. Right. And they're going to move out in a couple of months and find a house. Hey. Uh-huh. What does this have to, it, What did <laughs> she okay, say okay, about I'm you thinking, moving out there? And then I'm thinking that, like, probably Quit I thinking. Could stay with her mom, like, the first couple of months. Oh, like, no. Like, what did she say about you moving out there? What did she say? What did she say? That 
you know, I don't have, you know, that it's a big responsibility, you know, leave my family and stuff, but. Yeah. What did she, she say? Me. What did she say? That she wanted me to. Uh, she, said, she said that after you said, don't you want me to move out there? No, it, I didn't say that. I just said that that's something that I'm considering, you know, and she said, you know, that's your choice, but if you want to, then, you know, that make us both. All right. All right. Who cares? That's, okay, hey, that's... Jeremiah, call her up and go, you know what? I've changed my mind. I'm not moving to Texas. Ten bucks. She says, well, I understand. Yeah. Take the hint, man. Jeez. When anyone says, that's your choice, oh. that is anything but love, everybody. Oh. Please hear that. Yeah, she's like, I'm moving to Texas, and it's your choice if you come. That's leave me alone. God. Plus, I left the city that... I lived in with you to li to move to some asshole in New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, dude. And I listen. I've never been to New Mexico, but it has the word Mexico in it. That's enough. <laughs> that's enough for me to know I'm not going over there. So I moved to some. I moved to some Adobe uh, Sears gardening <laughs> in shed the desert in New Mexico <laughs> because uh, I had to get out. <laughs> it wasn't like see. I pictured her heading heading to the Dallas ranch, right over there to stay in Jr's bedroom or North something. 40, yeah, no, she moved to a dump to she get out of there. She's she getting, moved to hell on earth. She's getting out. She's living with aunts and friends along yeah. the way. All right, Dude, Jer Jeremiah's got yeah, and that's your choice. Jeremiah, Give her the boot. Please, booth. please don't budge and don't it, move. Did you God. guys? Here's always the one. Here's how, here's the tip off too. Did you notice we said? I said, did she ask you to move out there with her? Well, no, 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 her, no, 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 aunt, no, no, her aunt, her aunt in yeah. New Mexico. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. I'm guessing that's not a yes. All right, we'll take a little break. Please listen to reality, Jeremiah, and uh, we'll be back after this. Hey, everybody, Love Line. Jay McGraw is our guest tonight. Closing the gaps, the name of the book, a strategy for bringing parents and teens together. And let's see if we can, let's see if we knock off. Let's go for three calls. Go, Ready? Three. Go. Right there. Jason. Yeah. You don't want to play baseball anymore. No, I don't. And my mom is like, she's mainly getting on to me for not liking right. it anymore. Here's the deal, Jason. Yeah. If somebody doesn't understand something, they can't care about it. They can't rationalize. They can't sympathize. So you got to sit down. You got to spend some time with your mom. You got to talk to her about it. You got to find out why she wants you to play baseball. You got to tell her why you don't want to play baseball. You got to find a way that both of your needs are going to get met. She's if she's got some reason for you to play baseball, I doubt it's because she likes sitting in the stands. Okay, find out what it is, and then find some other way to meet the need that your mom has. Oof. And, and and ultimately, you don't have to do no, it. But you don't have to. Play you may sport. want to strike a little compromise with her and tell her you're think about you raising know, fighting cocks or something, yeah. or some <laughs> and other then activity. Work down from that. But also remember, your job is to be the kid, not to take care of the parent. Right. But if you got to, I mean, if your only option is to be more mature than your mother, then that's what you got to do. I mean, she's probably wanting him to play baseball because it occupies him from the time that he gets out of mm -hmm. school, the time that he gets she gets off work, or I mean, there's some reason that she's wanting him to do it, and if he goes. And talks to her, he can find out, and then he can say, "Okay, well, instead, I'm gonna, you know, whatever." Okay, All right. do something. Fair All right, let's talk to uh, Kevin. It's thirteen. Kevin. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what's when, going on, guys? Whenever you come, the tip Dude. of your penis burns. Yep. All right. Could he possibly have an STD, Drew? Mm, it's yeah, I guess. Well, are you sexually Is active? Yeah. How long have you been having this for? About three weeks now. Either right, so I'm having sex with my girlfriend. All right, you, you might have an, a urethral infection, <laughs> and those are sexually transmitted diseases. There's various organisms that can cause this. It's easy to treat, but you might be passing it back and forth, so you need to go see someone about that. All right. So they both need to go see someone about that. If he gets treated, she should be treated also. All right. Loy oh, says, uh, Adam, you only make $14 an hour. You ain't a millionaire. Where'd the 14 come from? I don't know. Yeah. Loy? Hello? Where did the $14 an hour come from? No, I don't know. It was just a figure of guessing. <laughs> what, what's your call about? Brilliant. Okay. Okay, me and my girl, like, okay, I met my her girl. a year ago. And she goes, okay, what would you do if, um, we're, if we stayed together for a while? And I said, what would, what, would you, what, would you, what would you do? And she goes, I don't know. I'll probably stay with you and marry you. And... Me and my mom are getting into all these big discussions about it, and she's all like, no, you're not marrying that son of a... 
you know, it's all this and that, and she keeps cussing at me, whatever. But she thinks that um, that I won't be able to marry her. And hold I'm, on, hold on. You're, you're calling from Pasadena? Yeah. Pasadena, Arkansas, or Pasadena, Southern California? <laughs> Southern California. Were, were you a transplant from some Ozark community? Huh? Where well, are you from? Out to, like Pasadena, Altadena. No, before Where are you originally born? from? Oh, me, I'm from, originally from L.A. When no. your mom, where's your mom from? She's from LA too. Where's the hick in the family? Where's the redneck? Hold on. Oh, where's the I'm accent? Gonna, I'm gonna float a theory. When you get really, really dumb, you just start <laughs> sounding <laughs> like you're from somewhere in the deep south. Hey, Lloyd, where's that? Where's that? That southern accent coming from? She's from New York. Oh, okay. Well, oh, okay. Now, now, now it There's where the southern accent's from. Right. Directly so, from the northeast. Lloyd, Listen, don't, you're 15. Don't even think about it. You're not. Yeah. Don't get her pregnant. You're 15. Do oh, not get on. her pregnant. Oh, for God's sakes, do not get her Dude, pregnant. Wait another 15 years. Emergency contraceptor, you can get it without a prescription now. That's Call right. my office. That's I'll right. give it to everybody. Yay! Okay, we'll be back. Well, there you have it. The first show back with uh, Dr. Drew in 2002. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the first time I've been here where, when Dr. Drew was here. No, no. Really? Yeah. Oh, Drew wasn't here last time? Last time, time. Last time you were um, doing Oprah. Oh, my God. Uh, no, yeah. you were here, though, once. Because remember you said your dad dropped you off in a limousine. Yeah, but so you that were That was in the Chicago. second time. No, no. You were in Chicago. Mm-mm, that was because I made you come back after that one. Wait so a minute. You've done this three times. No, uh, I think you've maybe. only done it twice. Uh-huh. I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, have you ever seen Drew before? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. He did Mars but Venus. I, I did Mars time. Venus. But you've not seen him in this studio? Well, I mean, I don't... Answer the question. Obviously, I don't think so. Hell, he does. Okay. Well, if he, if you, you, I don't know. It Maybe just, I have. It just really it just makes my point. Yeah, it's true. a real big... Nobody cares. True, I average just two and a half days a week here, so it's no yeah. wonder everyone... That's what I was it. getting at. I miss it myself sometimes. <laughs> okay, so uh, Jay McGraw, the uh, book is called uh, Closing the Gap, a strategy to bring parents and teens together. Go out and get that. Thanks for coming in, Jay. Good to see Thanks, you guys. for the second or possibly third time. Whatever. And we'll look forward to the third or possibly fourth time you come on <laughs> the show. See you soon. So until next time, it's Adam Carolla for the Seldom Here Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Oh, just this, look, just beat off into a rag and then <laughs> sniff it. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins-Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.